Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be going through the largest essential survivors guide with 54 tips on how to play survivor and win more games. With the new influx of players I can see a lot of people struggling to pick up the game and find out exactly how to play survivor and what to do and where to go and when, when, what, what. The first thing you need to know is that there are four classes. You probably have seen them but maybe you don't quite understand yet what the classes do. So the leaders have an aura around them which will buff the survivors. So go and have a look at each leader and see what each one buffs. The warriors are your melee damagers. So they have a huge melee damage bonus, but the terrible with ranged weapons. And I wouldn't even use ranged weapons if I'm playing on a warrior. I would pick up the weapon to drop for my hunter later on, but I wouldn't really use it. Now the biggest thing about the warriors, if you're playing them, the first thing you should do is max out your shields when you're using pink F. Because once you have 5 points on shields with pink F, whenever you use one amulet, you're gonna restore 2 shield bars. So that is the first thing you wanna upgrade when you're playing warriors. The hunters are your ranged damagers. They have 50% extra range damage bonus but they are also quite poor with melee weapons. They have 30% melee damage penalty. So they're kind of the opposite to the warriors, really. They're also the most nimble class, so they're able to dodge quite a lot. I think they can dodge about five times. The downside of them, of course, is they have low health. Now the supports, they keep everybody alive. Whenever you use your healables as a support in the middle of your group of survivors, you will heal everybody around you. So if you're gonna play support, you have to keep an eye on everyone. Don't go out on a solo mission. They also have some 20% penalty to both melee and range damage, so they don't need the best weapons. You just need to make sure you stick to your team and heal them when they need. Now, if you're new to the game, I probably wouldn't pick the leaders or the supports. If you're good with your aim, I will play Hunter because you wanna get those headshots. And if you have poor aim like me, pick a warrior. Now, one thing you need to know is about the character you picked. Most characters have a weapon mastery. Go and check it out. And if you find the weapon from your mastery, you wanna use it throughout the match. Unless you find a much better weapon so say you find a basic meat hammer and you're playing with kelly if you find a purple baseball bat and nobody else wants it well you might as well swap it in. so when you start the match you have to collect the three map pieces so you're gonna see here in the top right corner of the screen where the first map piece is once that's been collected then the next one will pop up until all three are done when you get close to the map piece it will show on your screen where it is it might also be a good idea to mark on the map where where are you going? People will see where you're going, they might follow you or maybe you can talk to them on the mic and then you can all go together towards the next objective. So once you know where you have to go, go towards there, stop along the way if you can very quickly to stock up on shemps, amulets and to choose your weapons. If you're playing a warrior and you come across a blue or purple ranged weapon, pick it up and drop it to your hunter when you see them. And likewise, if you're playing hunter or the other classes, if you come across a legendary melee weapon, pick it up, drop it to your warrior when you see him. Pick up all the ammunition you can, whichever class you're playing, because your hunters, they will run out of ammo and you need to drop that ammo to them. And you usually do that at objectives, like daggers or pages. Now, one thing you need to do is manage your fear. If your fear go past a certain threshold, then it shows on the screen that your fear level is too high, the demon will see you on the map and then it's gonna come straight at you. If you shoot your weapon before the demon finds you, it will show on the map where you are, so the demon will come and find you. Same with cars, don't use cars straight away. If you get into a car, the demon will see where you are. The only survivor that can do all of this without alerting the demon is Pablo. So if you're not Pablo, don't do it. And yes, crossbows also alert the demon. They are not silent. Now, when you're outside a building, typically, your fear will start going up. Whenever you approach light sources or you get inside a house, your fear will start going down. So it's always a good idea to hop from house to house or stay close to light sources. Light sources in general, they lower your fear very slowly. So it's always good to carry some matchsticks to light up a lamp or start up a fire on the points marked on the map. That will lower your fear very quickly. So quick recap, as you're going from objective to objective, stop along the way, get inside the houses, keep 
keep your fear low, stock up on ammo, healables and matchsticks, don't shoot your gun and don't use cars. When it comes to looting, be very quick. You don't want to stay in one place more than one or two minutes because you can only win this match if you can keep the demon level low and it will only stay low level if the match runs quickly, if you do the objectives quickly and it takes a long time for the demon to find you. Now, stay close to your teammates. At least while you're learning the game, try and stay together so that you can learn the game and you can support each other. Once you get more experience, you'll be able to understand when is the right time to go out on your own. If you're opening a chest, mark it to your teammates. If you're full of shams and shields and you can't carry any more, but you know maybe your teammates can, mark it for them. If someone's asking for a specific type of ammo, grab it for them. This is a team-based game. You are not going to win on your own. Same thing that I said, that you should pick up all the ammunition you can for your hunters. You should also carry all the shams and shields for your support. Because remember, when the support heals in the middle of the survivors, it will heal everybody and that includes shields. So drop all the healables to your support, but keep one of each for you. One shams and one shield for emergency. You never know when you're gonna need it. One of the ways the demon interacts with the survivors is by placing traps around the environment. You can actually see where the traps are. So just have a quick look at this. You can see that it's kind of transparent, floaty, ghosty thing. So keep your eyes open for these. If you cross these, an enemy will spawn out of it. Your fear will go up and you will take some damage. If the demon is around you and your fear is too high, you could open the item menu and drop your weapon. So if you're a hunter, drop your ranged weapon. If you're a warrior, drop your melee weapon. So many times I've lost because either I forgot to drop my weapon or my teammates did and then we just got wiped like that. And then do everyone a favor and do not carry a legendary knife. Because if you do get possessed with a legendary knife on your hands, it's a team wipe. It's too fast for any kind of counter unless you're good at kicking. Which leads me to the next tip. One of the new tactics that survivors are using when one of the survivor teammates get possessed is to kick them non-stop. Stop. Kicking will stun lock the demon and <laughs> some demons don't like this. A lot of people are saying this is an exploit. It is what it is. To kick you sprint and use the heavy attack. To keep spamming that it can be quite difficult and I struggle with that but some people are really good at it. That's something you can try and work on. Now once you get to objective maps or pages or maybe even before maybe you are fighting with the demon there's lots of units around all your teammates are around. One thing you can do is get into the cutscenes. If you are in a cutscene and another unit is attacking you, you will not take any damage and that includes for the bosses. However, if the demon is doing a demon dash to scare you, that will stop the animation. In fact, since the latest update, if you are on a cutscene and you spring a trap, it will stop the cutscene. Whilst you're fighting with the demon, make sure you dodge. If you want to get away from the demon, dodge towards the demon or perhaps towards your teammates so they can help you. If you're attacking a unit or a possessed unit with melee, you can cancel your attack so you can do a heavy attack and if you're going to be attacked at the same time by the unit or possessed unit you can cancel your attack by dodging so perhaps dodge to the side and then attack again that can be a powerful tactic once you complete the three map pieces two new objectives will appear on the map pages and dagger you want to try and do the furthest away from the center of the map first only if it's possible and the reason for that is you've got a storm that closes in after both points are done and they close in to the dark ones if you do the closest one first and then you do the furthest away after, if the demons get you guys stuck, the storm will close in and you will die on the storm. So once you start pages or dagger, it is important to stay within the blue circle that will show around the objective. If you get out of the circle, the timer will go down and you might have to restart point. Then if you're not playing hunter, drop all the ammo that you're not using. Perhaps you are a hunter and there's another hunter on your team that is using a different weapon that requires different different ammo and I hope you won't be using the same ammo type, drop everything you've got. Now if the demon down one of your teammates during point, it might be a good idea to not try to revive them, it depends. Sometimes you can revive them, sometimes there's too many units around and you're just gonna get killed as well. Sometimes the best call is to let them die and then you just want to try and survive because as soon as pages or dagger are completed, anyone who has been killed will come back. In between objectives, pages and dagger the best way to travel across the map is by going into cars save yourself the time and do not walk just get into a car and get to the next one quick you don't want to get into a car at the beginning of the match because the demon doesn't know where you are once he knows where you are it doesn't really matter just get into a car and move away because if you're in a car and you're going 
in a straight line, you're gonna make the demon eat dust. It cannot catch it. Now, if you're on your own and the demon summons the boss, get into a car and drive away. You will make him waste the boss that way. You could also do that if he's possessing units. If you die, do not disconnect. Not because you're gonna be penalized, but because your teammates might be able to revive you still. Also, if you disconnect, you don't get any spirit points at the end of the match. If you stick around and you lose, you get some spirit points. And since the latest update from the devs, we're getting twice as much spirit points now per match, and we're also getting 30% more spirit points whenever we level up our user level. There's a lot of spirit points going around, so stick around, because the worst it can happen is you win some spirit points. Now, balance bar or dismemberment. Balance bar is the little white bar that is on top of the enemy units just below their health. Once that depletes, the enemies get stunned for a certain amount of time. That has been the meta since the game launched. Dismemberment means they will lose an arm. If they lose both arms, the enemies can still headbutt you, but they are a lot slower and they don't do as much damage. This has not been the meta and this was broken for a long time. Now dismemberment is working a little bit better, but I'm not quite sure it's worth using it still. Once both objectives are done, it's time for the dark ones. The dark ones have three sets of health. Once the three sets of health are depleted, the Necronomicon will appear. However, if one of your teammates is down, it's worth getting them up first, because as soon as the two minutes timer starts on the Necronomicon, then you cannot resurrect your teammates anymore. So if someone needs picking up, the best choice could be to wait, pick them up, and then finish the dark ones. Now is your job to protect the Necronomicon. Tanky warriors can use their body to body block the book from being damaged by the demon. At this point, if the demon kills all of you, of course it wins the game, but if the demon also destroys the book, it will win the game. So this becomes a rush to protect the book and kill the demon units before it can destroy the book. This is the time to drop all the healables and the ammo for your teammates. Guys, this is mostly it. I hope this has been helpful. I probably forgot some tips, so if you are seasoned survivors, please let us know down in the comments for your new survivor teammates. And if you enjoyed this video, drop me a like, subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.